What a beautiful room, amazing people. So thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'm gonna jump right in because I'm direct like that. So apologies. Um, so I'm actually gonna start by just saying, I am here because of the work that was done in the 1960s. In the 1960s, we saw a revolution take over America and all over Africa and the continent. How many people know what that was? That was the civil rights revolution that actually swept through the 60s and has facilitated us to be able to be in this room, having this conversation. And I want to firstly show you the face of, there you go, of the people who actually made this possible. So for starters, let's put our hands together for all of these heroes that have actually facilitated this to happen today. I know you know a lot of the faces here, so actually take notes to the faces here. Now, let's fast forward to 2020. We had another revolution that actually took place. Um, it actually was the largest protest we've ever seen in the recorded history, where 26 million people took to the streets. Um, everybody knows about George Floyd and everybody heard that chant all over the world. It was a chant that said, Black Lives Matter. Now, I'm going to show you the faces of some of the key players in that revolution. I'm sure you know these ladies of the Black Lives Matter. We have Aya right there, we have Patrice, and we have Alicia. These are the ladies behind the Blackout Tuesday that many people got involved in. So everybody who did, thank you very much. Um, you have Aurora James from 15% Pledge and yours truly right there from Pull Up For Change. I didn't put that slide up to brag, uh, but these are actually the lead faces that drove the revolution of 2020. Now let's fast forward to 2022. As we speak right now, there's an active revolution happening in Iran where the women are rising up and they're saying enough. And this was driven by one person. She was the catalyst for the change and I'm gonna say her name because she's not here with us today. Masa Amini, she's the reason for this. But what are we seeing? For the first time, women standing up and putting the middle finger to the Ayatollah. We haven't seen that in a long time. So I'm gonna ask a question to the audience. Can you see a difference in the key players between the 60s, 2020, and 2022? Who can scream out what you can see as a difference in the, in the slides? Women. Women, what? But at the same time, ask yourself, how many female leaders are there in the world? If revolutions right now as we speak today are driven by women, if the uprising are driven by women, where are the women leading it after the revolution is over? I'm gonna let you uh, think about that and I will introduce myself. <laughs> Hi, I am Sharon Chuta and I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an activist, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, and um, I'm known to be a troublemaker, but only the good trouble. We don't get ourselves involved in bad trouble. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, which means I am female. I identify as female, so let's get into it. What does it mean to be female? Um, I can't be in London and not use the Oxford Dictionary, so I'm going to have to read to make sure I get it right because I don't want to be um, rude. So um, according to the Oxford Dictionary, uh, female um, means of or denoting the sex that can bear offspring or produce eggs. How flattering. That's what it means to be female. Who, is, uh, who, who, who produces eggs out here? <laughs> I'm happy someone's like, whoop, whoop, egg producing right here, <laughs> right? Now, if you think about that definition, it's actually not scientifically wrong, but there's a reason we're all cringing in here. And the reason we're cringing is because we know that this very narrow scientific definition has come to shape our lives and the expectation of us. As women, we are viewed squarely from the perspective of our uterus and the use for it. So whether it's finding a mate to use said uterus or <laughs> what happened after that uterus is in use, which is looking after children. And there is nothing wrong with finding a mate. I mean, it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with children because I'm sure a lot of you out here have children. But when you're viewed from such a narrow and singular lens and everything in your life is viewed from that perspective, maybe we have a problem right there. As a woman, here's what's expected of us. You have to be a great cook by, by definition. So if you're born and you can't cook, oh, bad girl, how could you, your mother didn't raise you well. You have to be a good homemaker, right? Um, and you have to, you know, be good at other things that I can't mention here in such um, polite and distinguished company, but you know of what I speak, right? Now let's flip the script. If you are male, your role, the traditional role as a provider, you can do this in any way or shape you want. 
You can be a basketballer, a footballer, an accountant. So let's flip the male and female situation. Let's assume every man came into the world and he had to be an accountant. And uh, even though he's the best rugby player on the planet, everybody's like, ah, such a shame. Ah, he can't be an accountant. This is exactly the life of a woman. No matter what you achieve, no matter who you become. Actually, the more you achieve, everybody pities you even more, which is, oh, yeah, well, of course she's a CEO. She didn't find a husband. Uh, if she did, she wouldn't be a CEO, right? And it's like a shame, right? This is the reality. But even what irks me even more is that, yes, we're expected to know how to cook, but when it comes to the commercialization of cooking, this is what it looks like. Here are the top 10 uh, most famous chefs on the planet. You notice anything there? We apparently the one job that we have, we're not even good at it when it's commercial. <laughs> We can't cook y'all, apparently. And I know you guys think I'm just angry about who gets the credit for a souffle, uh, but this is not it, right? This is our reality, and it's crazy. In South Africa, there's a saying that the woman holds the knife by the blade. In many cultures around the world, the hallmark of a great woman is her ability to endure enormous amounts of suffering while staying still. In Iran, as we speak today, where the women are rising up, you all know about the morality police. Um, they are there to enforce morality in the country, yet majority of their focus is on women and policing the dress code. Now, when they find some offending women, many of these morality policemen rape them. That doesn't sound very moral to me. Does it sound moral to you? The oppression of women in Iran is profound. You can't travel unless your father or your husband gives you that passport and permits you to travel. In 2019, 30% of the murders in Iran were honor killings towards girls and women. And what are we doing about it? Oh, but maybe it's just Iran. I mean, phew, it's Iran. It couldn't happen in the first world, right? Well, I live in America. And uh, who knows what happened this year for women? The big revolution was overturning Roe versus Wade, infringing on our reproductive rights in many states. Even if your life is at risk because of your pregnancy, you are assigned a death sentence without even a chance to plead your case. Even people who murder people get to go through a trial. You don't get a trial. It is done. There is nothing you can do regardless of the cost to your life. We are literally passengers in our own lives. We have no control of our bodies and this is set. When it came to vaccinations, the men of America said, my body, my choice. You don't get to tell me if you can't vaccinate me. When it comes to women, well, her body, my choice. In America, gun violence, kids are getting shot in school and nobody will change it because it infringes the right of boys to have their toys. But for our lives, we don't even get a say. Somebody else, a bunch of people sit down there and tell us how our lives is gonna be. Now, in America, one in 16 women lose their virginity to rape and coercion, one in 16. This is the home of the free and the land of the brave. But one in 16 women lose their virginity to rape. And what are we doing about it? Okay, let me cross you over. I'm gonna take you back home now. I'm from Nigeria. And the northern part of Nigeria, that's a predominantly Muslim part of the country. Women are married off as young as the age of 10. And this is the norm. There's your vagina fistula. Most people wouldn't even know what that means. It's a very common affliction. It's what happens when a girl births a child at 12 or 11 when she's not ready. It is a urinary incontinence that happens. And what are we doing? Nothing. We turn a blind eye. Okay, now let's forget about oh, all of this rah-rah because it sounds like I'm all doom and gloom uh, and bringing too much negative statistics in here. Not only are women controlled and policed in our bodies, but even our minds are reshaped and programmed from birth. Let's talk about the ability to be chosen versus to choose. We are raised to be chosen. Up to today, 2022, it is still unusual. In this room, I'm sure there are a lot of cute guys around here. If I just walked up to one of you, I was like, wow, I like you, ah, look at you. Instantly you're gonna go, well, she's a bit forward. I don't like that. So even in the one job that we were allocated, like go and find a good husband, still in that we can only choose after we've been chosen first. So you're choosing from a selection of people who've chosen you, process that information. So even our freedom of choice that I can choose whatever mate I want, can you actually? Because you're selecting from options that have already been given to you. Now, what is the downside about being programmed to be chosen? To be chosen, you have to stand out. 
that is the only way to be chosen, right? You're in a group of a lot of people, you've got to find a way so that people can see you and you can like flex the stuff or we can show them this good booty so we can get chosen, right? Now, at the same time, the world turns around and goes, women don't work well together. Why? Why do they tear each other down? Huh? You already raised us to stand out, which means somebody has to be pushed to the background. And also we know the consequences of being one of the people who weren't chosen. Um, we've all heard about the leftovers, right? That the whole world uses to reference us. And in China, there's actually a market for leftovers. Like literally parents take pictures of their daughters, please somebody have her oh, at whatever cost, please take her. There's a leftover market. So who wants to be part of the leftover? Nobody. Now think about this programming to be chosen and what you actually learn from that. When you're choosing from a selection of people who've chosen you, the risk profile is very low. So you don't learn rejection at a young age in the way boys do. What the boys learn at a young age is a numbers game. I like you, I don't like you back, oh, F off. I like you, I don't like you back, F off. I like you, right? That's what they learn at a young age. So what do they learn? They learn how to handle rejection. They learn how to put themselves forward, even if they don't think they qualify to. As you know, it's always that guy in class who goes for the hottest girl, first of all, like, <laughs> right? They learn that and that's good training. Look at us, fast forward into our careers. Many women are afraid to ask for a promotion. Many women are actually afraid to ask for the job. If we're not 12 out of 10, we're like, we, we can't do it. This is a phenomenon with a lot of women and it costs us in our careers. I work in the beauty industry and um, this is really crazy when you think about it. Majority of our consumers are female. Majority of beauty shoppers are female. When you look at the brands, majority of the workers within these brands are female. Yet, when you look at the major manufacturers, only 15% of the CEOs are women. So the next time you buy a lipstick or a mascara, think about it. Some dude who's never worn a lipstick or a mascara was the one who determined what your beauty should actually look like. Now that is insane. Feminist. What does it mean to be a feminist? The whole world says, oh, the feminist is the angry woman. She's a man hater and she's so mad because no man selected her. And that's why she's a feminist. Well, she's a feminist because she dare say, I want to find a partner, not because of what he can do for me, but because I love him and for who he, they are, she, whoever it is. I want to have the right to choose people, not because of any financial obligation, but because of who they are. Because she says, I want to be treated with respect and dignity, just like every other living creature on the planet. I want to have the right to choose and create my own destiny and shape my own destiny. And that's what's crazy. I want to be heard and not just seen. Now, that doesn't sound rebellious to me, does it? Does it sound like a rebellion to you? Because it doesn't sound that way. It just sounds like common sense. Okay, so I'm gonna stop with the doom and gloom <laughs> because now I know everybody thinks, oh my God, this is all doom and gloom. No, it's not doom and gloom. It's actually beautiful because guess what? The world is changing and it continues to change. For thousands of years, we lived in a different structure because we had to. Um, back in the day, strength was the only physical currency that mattered from the age of the cavemen who had to go hunt and gather. So of course, dude went to hunt and gather. I'm gonna have your food ready when you get back home. That's a lot of work. You fought a lion. You probably saw a dinosaur somewhere around there. I don't know. Uh, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, right? The man who went to war, because back then that was the only way to expand economically. If you wanted salt, you gotta go conquer somebody and get that salt. It was a different world. The miners who dug the earth for gold, you know, it was a very, very different world. But now, guess what? We live in the age of knowledge. We're in a knowledge economy and innovation knows no gender. Wisdom knows no gender. Um, the world is reshaping itself to become more about collaboration and not competition. We're moving into a world of inclusivity and not exclusivity a world of inspiration and not aspiration, a world where gender has no place other than a biological fact, and that's it. And we are even empowered now to be in a world where we can even challenge what it is to be female, to now expand outside gender binary lines. That is the beauty of the world we're living in today. And I'm here to even give you even better news that this world, everything we've been through as women, all of these struggles, all of these tribulations has shaped us, is set us to emerge as a new breed of leaders. Because guess what? Every time we had to bend that knee, we learned humility. 
How can you be a great leader if you don't know how to be humble? Every time we were shut up, like, ch -ch -ch, don't speak, be pretty. Go, no, 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 the girls go, go into the next room and go do the girly things. We learned how to listen. An incredible skill for a leader. We were meant to follow. That's what we were trained to do. So we learned how to do that. A leader who can't follow cannot lead. Everything we've been through today has actually been good prep work um, to shape us to play a key role in reshaping the future to be better for all of us. Isn't that beautiful? When you see it from that perspective, right? So I'm here to say to you today, being female is not an affliction. It's not, it's not a disease, it's just a biological fact. And feminism is not a revolution, it's not a rebellion. It is a common sense evolution that is going to be the pillar of building a better world for us all, where all genders can participate. We can bring our strength to the table. We can work in harmony. We can drop all the stupid non-common sense things and actually move on to, to really live very productive lives where we can be seen for who we actually are versus pre-assigned destinies. So guess what? To every woman in the audience today who thinks you aren't and you can't, rise up and be to all of the women in this room who've been called bossy. Keep leading badass because that's what you are. To all of the women who's been called, oh, you're aggressive. Keep being assertive. And to all of the women who are too much, keep taking space. And for me, this is my personal favorite because this one I get a lot. For the women who are branded as difficult, keep holding them accountable. That's who you are. You are the future. You are the ones who are going to lead the world working alongside men. You're going to work alongside men, but we are together going to shape the world that we want. Around the world, we hear it loud and clear. Women have a reason and they, are spo they have spoken. When I saw pictures last week of women in Iran, literally putting the middle finger up to the pictures of the Ayatollah, if that wasn't strong enough, she is awake. She has a reason. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you all to the age of her. So